Hi everybody, this is Professor Medaska. We're going to go through lecture today. We're going to go through chapter 5 in Exploring Computers. This is the, the last chapter that we'll cover before the midterm. Uh, subtotals, pivot tables, and pivot charts, which summarize and analyze data. This is a continuation of uh, chapter 4, which we uh, left off with before spring break. Hope everybody had a good spring break. Uh, but we are back, and now we are online exclusively. Again, as I said before, this should not drastically change the way our course is run because we've been utilizing Blackboard continuously from day one and using my IT lab as our primary source for assignments. We really uh, should not really miss a beat other than you uh, not seeing me for lecture um, at the beginning of class. So, chapter five, this will be the uh, last one we do before midterm. Subtotals, pivot tables, and pivot charts. Objectives. Things we'll cover in this chapter, and again, remember there is no My IT Lab for this chapter. It's only the lecture. So, this material you will see possibly on the midterm, but you will not see for My IT Lab. We do not have a My IT Lab this week. Objectives, page uh, slide rather, one of two. Subtotals, data, we'll cover that. We'll go through grouped and ungrouped data, why to merge data to make it look similar. Creating a pivot table, modifying the pivot table, using, using rather the filter and slicing a pivot table option. Creating a calculated field, which we did in chapter four. We started using that. Changing the pivot table design, creating a data model and a pivot chart. So these are some of the things that we will work on in chapter five. And again, only topics on the midterm, nothing from my IT lab. Objective one, subtotal data. Skills, things we'll cover, basically we'll be sorting multiple fields, which we did in chapter four. You're gonna go through, you can see the order of the sorts. The subtotal data, we'll create another uh, level of subtotals, this time all categories as far as like things that are grouped, adding a second subtotal, so not only the primary, but we can add another level, and then basically collapsing and expanding the subtotals, either show them or not show them. Here on this first slide, as you can see, there's basically a set of data, all right? You're going through, you're specifying a sorted column in this type of the discipline is being sorted, uh, and then they're going to select the different function to utilize. So we're going through in the dialog window to cover that, uh, on sticking on my left hand side, we're looking at the select columns. You're going to take units sold hail sale, units sold retail, any of these you could pick and choose again with a checkbox. And on the right hand side, top in um, the se selection over there, clicking the subtotals that will really show a subtotal. Second slide out of three, sorted by discipline. So in this case, everything's been sorted by a specific discipline, uh, everything's lumped together. It shows you the sum rows added towards the bottom, and again, they're highlighted in yellow. Also, if you look all the way to the left, you'll see the plus or minus. That goes back to our Windows chapter when we're basically showing or not showing categories and totals as need be. Click on the plus to expand, the minus to contract. Right-hand side, we're taking a look at sums calculated for units sold, hail sale, units sold, retail. Any of these basically are calculated, and these are the calculated fields that we have been working on, and we started in Chapter 4. Third slide, sum rows added. Over here, you can see we're only looking at the sum rows, and they're uh, at the bottom. See, with the plus, uh, if we clicked on them, they would expand. But we're only showing the totals as far as uh, family totals, introductory totals. So they're grouping everything together and only showing the totals in that section. That's one of the things, again, you could use with large data sets here in Chapter 5. Second objective, group and ungroup data. So we're basically going to put stuff together, and we're going to ungroup it as it would be normally as you typed it in and created. Data set grouped by columns. So in this case, we're going through columns like, for example, um, everything put together for criminal justice. All right, These things are all linked together, so if they tie in in any way, you would group them as we would with like English majors or management majors. Top right, group and ungroup, there's the basic checkbox to simply group or ungroup them depending on what their classification is. Third objective, create a pivot table. What is a pivot table? Pivot table basically is a visual 
that groups things together where you could dynamically change them at any time. Some of the skills we'll work on will be um, create a pivot table, a blank pivot table, and then renaming a pivot table. Data mining. Data mining, you hear that term all the time. Data mining is simply taking large pieces of information and condensing them to make sense, again, to use to predict what's going to happen. Pivot tables, it's interactive, which means it changes, and it's easy to switch based on what data you want to present. It uses calculations all right, to shrink, consolidate information, enables you to analyze data in a set, and then easily and quickly rearrange anything you want to show off, whether it's to your boss, whether it's to the board of directors, or whether it's to salespeople who are working with you. These are all options in a pivot table. Pivot table will look exactly as you see in the pivot table sample on the right-hand side. It's grouped together, again, as far as things that are in common, where it has the totals over there. And then underneath, where it says point to a pivot table thumbnail, this gives you options to change at any point quickly so that you can see the data. Next slide, click recommended pivot tables. All right, pivot tables up there. Again, it'll be recommended very much like themes are, so you can see things go through. Uh, right underneath, pivot table thumbnails. What are the thumbnails? They basically show you how the data will look. It's like themes. They're all pre-designed for you. All right underneath that, pivot table preview. It'll show you how the table will look when you make your selection. Next slide. There's your pivot table on the left-hand side. Nice and neat. On the right, here's your options pane. It's the pivot table fields pane. It gives you options and things to choose from. Notice what's checked off. You have two things checked off. Discipline and units sold. Wholesale. That's why it's showing. And that lists the field in the middle. Towards the bottom where it says drag fields here to add to the pivot table. This we will go through quickly to show you how you can uh, manipulate data and show it in different forms. Last slide in this section, pivot table placeholder. That's where it would basically show up on the left-hand side and on the right, move to a new worksheet. As we did with charts, you could put it in the current worksheet or you could create it and move it to a new worksheet. Fourth objective, modifying your pivot table. Here we're going to add rows and columns, remove fields, reorder fields, change settings, and then refresh so that things update. F9 key is usually the refresh key on a keyboard. But again, Mac guys, who knows what you guys. Modifying a pivot table, changing it. On the left hand side you have the discipline field label. So again it's showing up underneath the discipline and then it's under the subdisciplines. There's your areas, which in this case represent the subdisciplines. On the right hand side it shows you what order comes first, discipline comes first, and underneath it area comes second. That's on the right hand side under the pivot tables fields um, dialog box where it allows you to make your changes in the three different sections and again you're going to have a ton of different changes from here this is where you will make all your modifications but no my IT lab just all this is in theory for the midterm second slide in this section count of book titles so over here we basically showed together a, a count of book titles with the sum of units sold and the sum of the sales and you can see on the left hand side how the pivot table will look if you chose that option a myriad of options to choose from when you're organizing info. One column for each copyright year, so they've picked by year. How many, what are the copyright years to summarize plus grand total? So we have a grand total on the right hand side, we have the disciplines, and now we have by year the copyright. Copyright basically goes into the column setting, hence, you have all the different columns that are organized by the different copyright years. Fourth slide, it just we're focusing in on the pivot tables, fields, dialog box. Notice in here you have three things selected, discipline, area, and unit sold. Does your checkbox. In the middle between filters, columns, rows, and values, we have nothing in filters, so we haven't filtered anything out. There's nothing in columns. But if you wanted to move anything, like they're showing you an example of moving the area from a row to a column, and a row is on the left at the bottom, currently in rows is discipline and area you would drag it and simply move it up. On the right-hand side bottom is the sum of the values. In this case, you're looking at sum of units. So this is where you would put your information and organize it from here for pivot tables. Last slide in this section. Um, you would go through value settings. You type in the name if you were going to create one. Select a function, whether you want min, max, average, 
standard deviation, any ones you want. And then the formatting option all the way at the bottom. Click on it, it would utilize whatever format for the numbers you so chose. Moving on, fifth objective, filter and slice. Filter and slice is to basically just show things you want to see. All right, insert a timeline, insert a slicer, and customize a slicer. So we'll get to learn what a slicer is. In this case, we're looking at editions now. So whatever edition is, fourth edition, first edition, second edition. Right-hand side in the pivot tables field, you have filter by edition. So now we're filtering it only showing by editions. Which ones do we want? Same thing with a checkbox. You select or deselect accordingly. Second slide of five, click and insert a slicer. So you would click checkbox at the top, all right, in your analyze um, tab. And then from there, you would go through and select the fields that you would want to utilize as a slicer. What is a slicer? Here's a slicer. Slicer by discipline. On the right-hand side, I'm looking. Uh, clear filters. And then three disciplines selected. So they chose family, introductory, and social problems. Eerily familiar at this current point in time. So we check those. As you can see down there, um, towards the middle of the screen, there's click by filter edition check there you should be able to see it and on the left hand side you have simply those three disciplines and you've only sliced them out so it's only slicing a portion as if you were cutting up a pizza you're not eating the whole pizza you're eating a slice of the pizza fourth uh, filter and slice pivot table you have blue and light blue these are simply buttons they're almost similar if you were on a tablet or on your phone in this case it's only two columns so you would click on um, the way it's designed, you would select or deselect whichever you wanted to choose. Also on the, the right hand side, it says 3.13 high. That's resize or handles. Same thing as we did with pictures, tables, and any of that stuff. So you'll be able to resize or leave as is. Last slide in the section, pivot table timeline. All right, tiles to collect, to click rather to set filters. So we have our divisions, we have our sum, and we have sales, summer sales, so those two columns, and also grand total underneath. What this does, it's the timeline tool. It shows you changes over the course of time. In this case, they're looking at months. You could do years, quarters, days, but they've chosen months to show basically how trends take place over the course of time. Objective six, calculated fields. Create and show calculated fields. And again, we worked on this last week in Chapter 4. Here's the Insert Calculated Field dialog box. You'd have your name. Then you would have your formula. You would build the formula. So we're using the Build Formula dialog box in this case. Building formula using names. You would select the field. For example, unit sold times unit price. That would be one field multiplied by another. Here's what actually transpired when they created one in uh, slide two. Sum and percentage columns, all right, you see them point over there on the left-hand side. Also underneath that on the left-hand side, discipline and area rows, so they're broken up between those, the discipline and subcategory of area. On the right-hand side, rows determined by discipline and area towards the bottom, and then at the sum, the value section, sum and percentage of values. These are how they're all basically organized. So, Again, with this, you're looking at a ton of information and how you're simply going to organize it or what your management, your board, uh, your boss, whoever would want to see these, this information, how they'd want to basically piece it down. They don't want to see 18 million entries. They want to see the things that count in the summarization of those 18 million entries. Objective 7, changing the styles of the pivot table. Very similar to like we worked on with charts. Um, on the left-hand side, Pivot Table Tools Design tab. And on, on the right side, you have the More section, and you have the Pivot Tables Styles Gallery. So you just simply choose a style, and voila, it would appear. Objective 8, create a data model. Skills, create relationships, which we've done before in Excel, and create a pivot table from these related tables. What we're looking at is we're looking at the reps table. So we're looking at reps. We have the drop-down box again to make choices. We have a primary table sales towards the bottom dialog box making choices and the related tables rep. So we're looking at a couple different tables. We're going to go to the relationship. We click on relationships and we would create a relationship from them. How are they related between the sales table and then the columns that are related. Second slide. 
click on pivot table from this data we're going to create a pivot table so we would do the relationships first as we did last week in chapter four now we're going to go create a pivot table so click on the table click on the primary table all right underneath fourth bullet primary table is displayed finalized by select checkbox select checkbox which brings us to here the reps table we have our reps information we have our sales table and fields information and then we have dates from sales table underneath that's basically in the columns and in the rows we have the sales and reps from the reps table so it's organized between two tables you could have four tables it's organized to show information how it was set why it was set and what you're looking to show objective nine create a pivot chart we're going to create and modify a pivot chart pivot chart looks like this it's very similar to a pivot table only set in a table format it's a visual format. On the left-hand side, starting from the top, I'll work my way down. Pivot chart, it's pointing to the actual chart. In this case, again, it's a column chart. We went through the different charts in Chapter 3. Now we are filtering, in this case, filter by date. Also, filtering by sales rep. So remember your X and your Y axis and the way it's laid out. On the right-hand side, we're looking at columns area. So my columns area is now in the legend. And the rows area, which are the categories, are on the axis. So that's how a chart would be laid out as you see this. So to summarize for chapter 5, last one in Excel, subtotal function, be familiar with sum, average, count, man, mic, uh, max, minimum, and then be familiar with basically how and what pivot uh, tables and charts are for. Pivot table consolidates a ton of information and puts it into a small category so you can see usually um, summations, categories, areas. It also enables a data analysis, and it allows you to quickly change, rearrange data from one uh, piece of information to another. And then last thing we just covered, pivot chart. It's a graph that, again, allows you to do the same thing, only instead of as table form, graphically. So, again, this is in Chapter 5. This is Excel. This was our um, lecture for this week. As, again, I won't, we're not in class, so um, I wanted to go through the PowerPoint with you to uh, summarize it, go through. Look over this. Let me know if you have any questions. Emails, we go through. Once this is uh, you've wrapped up with this, start focusing in on studying for the midterm, which will be up on Blackboard, as I have mentioned, from day one the uh, next Wednesday on March 25th. So if you have any questions, again, email me. Let me know. Keep me posted. I'm checking email all the time. And uh, after this, this week in class, um, if you're work, watching this past and this week on the 18th, we're going through and I will take a look at the review for the midterm. If you have any questions, again, email me and let me know. Here's your copyright information.